Hello, I'm Dr. Petrus Grivas. I'm a medical oncologist in Seattle at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center in the University of Washington. I'm a professor in oncology. I'm serving as the clinical director of the Gento Urinary Cancers Program, and I'm so excited to partner and work with, with a dear friend and colleague, Dr. Wright. Uh, well, I'll let Jonathan introduce yourself. Thank you, Dr. Grievous. Uh, as Petro said, my name is Jonathan Wright. I'm a urologic oncologist at the Fred Hutch Cancer Center, University of Washington. It's a very exciting time, Jonathan. I agree with you. So many things are happening in the field of bladder cancer. I'll start, you know, with patients who have localized bladder cancer. The bladder uh, uh, is the origin of the cancer, and this cancer has not spread, has not metastasized. Now we have new ways to treat this cancer with higher success rates. We now compile chemotherapy with immunotherapy to different approaches, different mechanisms of uh, how these drugs work in patients who we think can tolerate this treatment. Of course, we tailor it based on the other medical conditions and personalize it, you know, in this particular patient. But if we think it's a good idea for this particular patient, we combine chemotherapy with immunotherapy and that combinations, again, in appropriately selected patients can result in higher chance of complete resolution of the cancer when the uh, cystectomy takes place and cystectomies are being done by experts like you, Jonathan. We call this a pathologic complete response, meaning no cancer is left behind, which is great. And then we continue that with uh, uh, a little bit more of immunotherapy after the cystectomy. That's a recent update that we learned about in the last uh, few months. And uh, it's a trial called Niagara, like the river, and that data are, are very, very uh, encouraging, increasing the, the chance of, you know, uh, getting better therapies for our, uh, and outcomes for our patients. At the same time, um, we have more and more utilization of what we call bladder preservation, and you and me are working together in that regard. Uh, we will learn, you know, more about which patients are better candidates for that. And for metastatic disease, when the cancer has spread to other organs, Jonathan, we have many more treatments nowadays. In the last year, we have seen a doubling of the average life expectancy of patients with metastatic cancer. And it's amazing to see that progress made in the field because uh, the numbers in terms of the uh, prognosis of the patients and the life expectancy estimates are much better now compared to before. So we have many more options for our patients and we start to think, can we potentially cure some of those patients with metastatic bladder cancer? We could not even dare say that before. Now we start to think about it, of course, is there's no guarantee on a patient per patient basis, but we're getting definitely making good progress, major progress, and that translates to longer life and better quality of life for our patients through the, of course, innovative therapies that come through clinical trials. And speaking of that, Petros, one of the, you know, you mentioned the combination now of chemotherapy with immunotherapy that we're doing for standard bladder cancer, but certainly one of our areas of interest is looking at these rare subtypes. And, and why don't you tell, just mention a little bit about the combination chemotherapy and immunotherapy study that's come out of here? Great point, Jonathan. We work on this together over the years. I remember we persisted through the years of the pandemic and we accrued in this very innovative clinical trial. And I know you and me work together in those clinical trials with our teams in medical oncology, neurological oncology, and uh, in many cases in radiation oncology as a multidisciplinary team. So that particular trial, we did exactly that. We tried to combine chemotherapy with four different chemotherapy drugs, which is standard uh, before radical surgery for patients with localized bladder cancer combined with immunotherapy, a drug that's activating the immune system, you know, take one of the checkpoints, the breaks of the immune system away and activates the immune system. That combination resulted in a very impressive proportion of patients with no cancer left behind when the bladder was removed. We still needed the surgery because we didn't know for sure who is going to have that great benefit, but we saw approximately six out of 10 patients had no cancer left behind when the bladder was removed. Really exciting results. We presented this data together at the recent uh, conference we had, the national, international conference, and we're now actually waiting for the publication. It's really exciting to see that this combination can be very effective, but particularly to your point, in those bladder cancers who have that some unusual features. We call these variant histologies or unusual histology subtypes.
Yeah, I think, you know, the, it, it, we move into the earlier stage disease. You know, you've spoken well about the muscle invasive and the metastatic, but we've also seen a tremendous increase in research in non-muscle invasive bladder cancer. And much of this has come out of tr us trying to find a, a new option for uh, people that do not respond to BCG or relapse after BCG or who just need BCG. So BCG has been the standard of care for high-risk non-muscle invasive bladder cancer for decades. Decades. It's uh, immunotherapy where we put uh, essentially a live attenuated uh, bacteria into the bladder, turn the immune system on, have it come in, and the immune system says, well, there's no infection here, but that cancer cell shouldn't be here, so they attack the cancer cell. Um, but unfortunately, there has been a shortage that's been going on worldwide for five, seven years now, and we're getting closer to hopefully being out of this shortage. But as a result, which really energized the field to try to find alternatives to, to BCG. And we've been lucky to be able to participate in a couple of these studies now. Uh, and now there are new drugs. There are two new therapies that are approved. There are a couple others that are very close to being approved. So it's an exciting time for us to, to be a part of these patients that have not only access to standard of care, hopefully, but alternatives uh, and also therapies for when those uh, those treatments still allow for relapse to occur. Um, and in fact, kind of crossing back over to muscle invasive, one of the studies that Dr. Grievous and I and one of our fellows is working on is combining this idea of how can we keep raising the bar? So if we combine the immunotherapy with the chemotherapy that he's talking about, which is given systemically through the whole body, can we add one of these new intravesical therapies in the bladder therapies to have a combined local effect on the bladder cancer too? So we, have a, we are going to be opening that trial hopefully within the next several months as another chance to say, what more can we do? How can we combine these therapies to hit the cancer from multiple different uh, angles to really achieve uh, uh, outcomes and success for our patients? Absolutely. And, and this is a great example, Jonathan, how we make progress. You know, we disseminate the results in conferences. We're so excited. And as we try to keep improving and keep raising the bar, the question in the back of our mind is, can we get to a future state or whether we could potentially, you know, cure patients without having to remove the bladder? And we do that to a degree in properly selected patients, and we try to expand the indications. And I think our multidisciplinary team is great because we do this personalized approach and we get the expertise from different team members so, you know people like you like me and also radiation oncology we have pathologists and radiologists looking at that and we try to come up with a personalized treatment plan that applies to these particular characteristics of the cancer but also taking the patient as a, an entity and other medical conditions into account absolutely uh, bcg is one of the first immunotherapies where it's harnessing your own immune system uh, against the cancer now some of the newer therapies that our immunotherapies have ways to turn on directly the immune cells to kind of wake them up from their slumber to attack the cancer cells. Whereas what the BCG does is trying to draw the immune cells to the area where the cancer is to work against the cancer. Because our immune, our immune system is working regularly to help clear the mistakes that our body makes routinely with, uh, with DNA, with DNA changes, with the, as our body grows and turns over. So having a um, strong immune system is crucial for us, which is one of the big reasons why I am such a believer in diet, exercise, and mental health to help us in our, in our own personal fight against uh, not just cancer, but other, other diseases as well. It's a great point, Jonathan. And, you know, as I hear you talk about this and all the work is being done in the field uh, by you and others, you know, we are keep expanding, you know, this idea of immunotherapy. And I know you, uh, you and me are, uh, are going to open a different trial now in the next day or two, looking at patients who already had uh, potentially chemotherapy, if they were, you know, a good fit for that. Uh, and also they had, of course, removal of the bladder, radical cystectomy, as we call it. And we try to see in those patients, if we give immunotherapy after the surgery, we know that this, you know, that immunotherapy may help them, you know, uh, potentially uh, live longer without cancer coming back, without cancer recurrence. And we're actually getting to that point now that technology can help us find a more personalized immunotherapy approaches, which is exciting. So we're working on this trial together, which is uh, based on better understanding of the biology of the cancer. And we try to develop actually a, a 
like a vaccine that is personalized, so we try to look at the cancer particular mutations and characteristics of the cancer on the individual level and develop you know, a treatment that matches those characteristics. So we try to train the immune system to, to stimulate the immune system to attack the particular mutations that the cancer has. And we try to see whether that you know, kind of approach, uh, we call it a new antigen-based approach, can work together with a classical conventional immunotherapy. So we're excited to test that uh, you know, uh, idea uh, in the next uh, several months to, to years by doing this clinical trial as another example of how we can work and try to improve our, uh, the outcomes of our patients through innovative clinical trials. And we have a very similar uh, study happening in the early earlier stage of bladder cancer too. The same thing, actually, this, and this time the immune uh, medication we're mixing with is BCG, trying to mix BCG with one of these patient or tumor specific vaccines for the newly diagnosed with with earlier stage disease so it's a, it's exciting how we can apply these concepts at, at both earlier and later later uh, stages of the disease the other thing about the very individualized and personalized approach is this growing concept thinking of what has been discovered in the last couple of years is trying to use uh, circulating tumor cells to be able to help us guide treatment therapies the treatment therapies who needs treatment and who doesn't and that's also one of the things that we are specifically doing in our own research uh, here at the Fred Hutch in the University of Washington and that is collecting samples from patients during therapy in those that are getting BCG in the earlier stage those that are getting chemotherapy and immunotherapy at a later stage to see if we can apply a very uh, specific and novel way to detect DNA alterations uh, um, in the urine, in the blood, to ideally be able to see who's responding during therapy, who has this minimal disease left, who is the complete responder, such that they might not need the surgery or additional therapies that Dr. Griefus was mentioning earlier. And so a lot of our patients were asking them to, to donate these samples. And it's exciting because this is where we can take our own patients, our own challenges, uh, and apply it to what we do on an everyday basis. Absolutely. And Jonathan, I'm very excited about that. This blood-based, you know, cancer said uh, DNA that you talked about is very promising and, you know, can, you know, uh, help us design trials and, you know, sometimes make therapy decisions to your point. And uh, to build upon that, it's very exciting work that you are leading with the same idea, but in the urine. And I know this will be uh, very promising down the road to see about uh, urine-based DNA and whether that can help us down the road, uh, evaluate how the treatment works uh, in that level and help our patients that way. Well, I think there's so many things that, that bring people to, the, to Fred Hutch. Uh, I think specifically within bladder cancer, the work we have continued to do like the other cancers treated here of really having the multidisciplinary care and recognizing that it's not just the surgeon, it's not just the medical oncologist, the radiation oncologist, it's all of them together, plus the pathologist, plus the, uh, plus the different support services. Petros already mentioned about genetics, nutrition, physical therapy, um, uh, alternative therapies. With this, this is why we get excited and enjoy what we do. A patient with muscle invasive bladder cancer who comes to the Hutch is going to come to the Bladder Cancer Multi-Specialty Clinic, which has been running since 2014, where they get a comprehensive evaluation and approach in a one-stop shop, where they see that they see all the providers, and they we get to all see them at once together too, and share our ideas talk about the issues and help figure out again what is the best treatment for that one patient and then when they're there at this at this conference at this uh, consultation we are also engaging in our research opportunities too clinical trials if they're eligible for them but also these urine and blood collection as well to help us to do the bench type work that we need to understand more about the disease, how to monitor, how to earlier detect. So when they come here, they're getting the clinicians, they're getting the team, and they're getting the cutting edge for today and tomorrow.
Absolutely. So well said, Jonathan. It's the team approach, the multi-specialty, interdisciplinary approach that makes it everything work so well in terms of communication, interaction, and coordinated care. And I think, you know, patients appreciate that. And, you know, we were partnering, you know, with, with our colleagues in the laboratory, as you said, we do cutting-edge research, providing access to innovative clinical trials, partnering, of course, with patients, patient advocacy groups like the Bladder Cancer Advocacy Network, BCAN, and we give educational materials and resources to patients, and we try to do this comprehensive approach, try to meet the patient where they are and be as patient-centered as possible.